Chancellor, Deputy Vice-Chancellor, members of the University of Western Australia Senate and Executive, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and friends, and most importantly, graduates of this fine university. I'd like to first start by acknowledging the traditional owners of this beautiful land on which we meet this evening, the Wajak Noir people, and pay respects to their elders past, present, and future. I'd like to thank them for their continuing and rich culture that we all benefit from, and the contributions that they make to life in this city and this region. I remember almost 25 years ago graduating for the first time in this grand hall and before that taking my arts and law degree exams with hundreds of other students in this same place. I have lived and worked away from Australia for 13 years but returned to this beautiful city seven years ago and have been fortunate enough to have spent more time in this my alma mater recently as a guest lecturer, tutor, and enjoying various alumni events. And so it was an honour for me to be invited by the Chancellor to deliver the keynote address at this University of Western Australia graduation ceremony. But after the tingles of excitement, pride, and flattery wore off, the horror set in. How on earth will I manage to inspire, inform, and entertain all of you intelligent, accomplished individuals in just seven, well, now six and a half minutes? And how can I do that in a way that will be relevant to you, especially given you are all graduates of the business school, which is a cruel irony for me, because the one thing that I've always been told is that I consistently lack business nous and acumen. Come to think of it, perhaps I should conduct some informal job interviews with some of you later on this evening. Well, my first step was to take the advice I often give others that I coach and mentor, and that was to look for inspiration. After Googling UWA graduation speeches, I found and watched the wonderful YouTube footage of Tim Minchin addressing the graduands of 2013. I have to confess, that didn't help. He's funny. I'm not. It only made me more horrified. After much conjecturing and deliberation, I decided to take the advice of one of my English professors, who gave me a particularly disappointing mark for one of my overly verbose, overly complicated essays. She said, keep it simple, Sadiq, and speak about what you know. For those of you who aren't familiar with my story, let me briefly acquaint you so that it goes some way to explaining why I stand before you this evening. I am, like all of us, to some extent, the product of my time, my cultures and my generation. I'm a very proud first-generation Australian, the eldest child of an Indian Muslim immigrant father and an Anglo-Saxon mother. We immigrated to Perth in the mid-1970s when white Australia policy was still very much alive. Having seen what my father endured as an outsider in those conservative times, and having suffered my own challenges as a child, I developed an early and strong sense of social justice that laid the foundations for my later decisions to study both arts and law and to eventually practice as a criminal and human rights lawyer for the next 20 years. I moved to the United Kingdom in the late 1990s in the hope of realising my calling to become an international humanitarian lawyer, working with victims of war crimes and terrorism. And later, very unexpectedly, commissioned as a legal officer in the British Army, where I served for eight years and deployed to many countries, including Northern Ireland, Germany and Iraq. It was while serving in Iraq that I became involved in a fairly high-profile hostage incident that eventually led me to mounting a landmark discrimination case against the British Ministry of Defence that resulted in significant changes to policies and attitudes towards women, ethnic minorities and homosexuals in the armed forces. 
I went on to practice as a civilian war crimes and terrorism prosecutor for a number of years and eventually returned to Perth with my family in 2011. I was convinced by others that my story was one that needed to be told. And so I published my memoir, Equal Justice, in 2013. And for the last five years, I have also made a living as an international storyteller, leadership and resilience coach, and human rights advocate. So now that I have briefly shared with you some of my journey, you may understand why I choose to use this time that we have together to impart to you the lessons that I have learned along the way. Some of them I wish someone had told me years ago. I may have listened and saved myself a lot of grief, but then again, I may have not. Either way, I feel as someone who has been incredibly lucky and who has seen the worst and the best of humanity, it's incumbent on me to share with you some of my limited 46 and a half years of wisdom. John F. Kennedy eloquently said in his 1961 speech about space travel, we choose to go to the moon in this decade and to do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. This speech formed the origins of the term that we now call moonshot. Today we use the word moonshots to describe goals that are difficult but have great significance. My first piece of advice to you fine graduates is don't be afraid to create your own moonshots. Some of you will be lucky to have dreams, but dreams aren't for everyone. And I suspect that as business school graduates, many of you will subscribe to the wisdom of setting achievable, practical and measurable goals. That's sensible and admirable. But don't be afraid to play a little as well. Experiment with the grand, the difficult, with imagination and wonder, and be flexible. One thing I've learned is that the best laid plans almost always go awry. Be prepared and unafraid to change course, to make mistakes and learn quickly, to fail and pick yourselves up again, and to always keep an eye and an ear out for unexpected opportunities that present themselves at the most unpredictable of times. Don't be a control freak all of the time. Surrender to other possibilities and venture down different pathways. You are the generation that quite literally has the world at your mobile device fingertips. Many of you will live for a century, have multiple careers and working jobs the rest of us can't even imagine now. Enjoy every moment the good times and the bad, as all of it is a reminder of what it means to be alive. Protect, preserve, and always maintain your humanity, especially in business. Whether it's the world of high finance, complex business transactions, macroeconomics or human resources, remember, as Alex Malley the Chief Executive Officer of CPA Australia said in his book, The Naked CEO, it's always about people. You're not just dealing with currency, cash and companies. You're dealing with lives. Do your work as you should do life, with respect, compassion, integrity and ethics, as well as a sense of purpose. If you follow this advice, you will never go wrong. Because when we do things with the right intentions, in the right way, life always has a way of working out for the best. This I truly believe. Next, strive to be your best self and look after yourself. Because, as Tim Minchin said in his this very hall five years ago, life is long and can be tiring and hard. Find your work-life harmony. 
Exercise, travel, eat, drink, and love with an open heart. Teach and inspire others. Look for opportunities to learn and develop your minds. Be critical thinkers and give back through service when and where you can. A life worth living is a life where we live bigger and beyond ourselves. Finally, create your own universe. Stamp your uniqueness on all facets of your life. Keep acquiring as well as sharing knowledge. Be discerning with those whom you choose to forge relationships with and spend time with. Approach each human interaction as a mutually beneficial one. Be trustworthy. Be trailblazers. Be leaders. Don't be afraid to do something uncomfortable. Use the intellect and qualifications you have been fortunate enough to have acquired for greater good. In the words of my hero, Mahatma Gandhi, be the change you wish to see in your world and in the world around you. In these times of automated economy and cryptocurrency, of randomized trials and where the politics of fear and division are gaining momentum, when our planet is quite literally dying, where business has never been more competitive and tough, we must be prepared to take back our agency. We are the privileged ones who have that agency, that influence and resources. Use it wisely, use it well, and live a good life. I want to leave you with four calls to action. These are inspired by a man that I have greatly admired for some years, an African-American human rights lawyer and the founder of something called the Equal Justice Initiative. His name is Brian Stevenson. The first of these calls to action is this. Are you willing, graduates of this fine university, to confront your realities? Until we are willing to identify the beautiful as well as the ugly truths in our life and our world, we can't begin the work of overcoming, healing, and becoming stronger, wiser, and more compassionate human beings. The second, are you willing to challenge and, if necessary, change your perspectives on yourself, on others, and on the world around you? This requires you to always question your opinions, the opinions of others, and to never take for granted what you read or what you hear. It's when we change the narrative that we develop and progress as a species. Number three. Are you willing to protect and preserve hope at all costs? Hope, faith, and belief that we can all create ripples of change and make a difference is the most powerful tool we humans have against ignorance, oppression, and fear. Our survival depends on it, and we all have a role to play here. And number four. When it counts, for the greater good, are you prepared to do something uncomfortable? Stand when others remain seated. Speak up when those around you remain silent. Take a risk. Be brave. Be different. Be unapologetically unique. Thank you all and my sincere congratulations to you, the graduates of UWA.